people and bring them a brand new show role play to my home city of Bangor by the Sea on Saturday the 19th of August 2023. It's going to be my biggest show of the year. Tickets are nearly all sold out. So if you want to come and enjoy a special moment in my life, get your tickets via the link in the description. It'll be a lot of fun and I hope to see you there. That was creepy. I'm sorry about that. Guys, if you love the podcast and you want more Sly Guy in your week and you just think this, this podcast isn't suffice, you can subscribe to the Sly Guy Podcast Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast, where you get early access to the weekly podcast, you get the extra Sly Guy Podcast, you get Dog Walks with DV guest episodes, and a load of other stuff. Early access to tickets and shows and the like as well, all over at patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast. And there's an absolute bloody backlog of stuff there to look at too so there's hours and days and months worth of stuff there for you enjoy at patreon.com forward slash sly guy podcast the podcast is as always sponsored by modest beer modest started right here in hollywood county down and they moved to randallstown but that's what's happened that's expansion and that's modest beer i mean i could sit here and talk about modest beer all day but i'd probably bore you so what you should do is go to the official modest beer website which is www.modestbeer.co.uk where you can subscribe to their brews letter where you get a little email in your inbox giving you all info modest beer check them out there if you can't be arsed doing that just follow them on social media at modest beer i'm the sly guy hello and welcome to this week's sly guy podcast i hope this is a good day for you i hope you're ready for a fun episode because that's what this was my guest this week is actually a debutante, somebody who I've wanted to get on the podcast for a while now, and finally the stars have aligned, and we have connected. It's none other than the good-looking half a deck chair and Yums, Yums himself, Connor Keys. Connor's one of my favourite acts on the scene, one of my favourite guys on the scene, let's be fair, um, and it's great to finally have him on the podcast to have a bit of crack. So guys, listen, it's been a long time coming, but it's here, and it's a great episode, so enjoy my little bit of banter with Connor Keys. Didn't raise this close. So this I know it's joy. nice. It doesn't this is the joy of uh, it doesn't look. Editing. It doesn't close, look at yeah. But no, Keezy, listen. At last, I was to doing the introduction there, saying I'm finally glad to have you after all this time. It's much. great to be down. How how does it feel to be to be in what is the hottest room in it is, of Hollywood? Yeah, well, this is not fat man weather. No, know? it's not <laughs> a good time. But you, uh, the first thing I noticed about you was you walked to the door. I was like, been this on. You know, you look like a man who enjoys I, uh, a bit of swerve. Well, I wouldn't say I enjoy it. <laughs> I'm kind of forced to do it. Yeah. My child uh, has me outside all day, and yeah. uh, I'm not allowed in. So, mm-hmm. uh, And then vitamin D as well. I've been taking vitamin D now for years, so that's yeah. the fucking... It helps. No, I had no kids today. Ladies so and I gents, was... this is where the tan comes from. Yeah. Get fucking... <laughs> I was in the garden all day today, just with no kids, just doing a bit of work. Pure bliss. Sitting with a dog, it was a nice time. Right. And then... Um, I was because I didn't expect it because I was getting too excited last week about the about the good weather and then they said it was going and then I had no kids today and the weather's back hotter than ever so I'm scalded. Ah, got the oil on and everything. Got the full. And then you've got the head shave now too. You see, so it's yeah. The potential for burning has now increased. I know, and but the thing about you, like I was going to talk about that, was you've done the reverse mm. of me. You've when I first met you, you had a full shaved head, and I just thought he just has. But you have a full bastard head of hair. <laughs> and I didn't really. Like, yeah. I was just lazy, man. I yeah. swear to God, I was so lazy. It was just like, just do one all over. Yeah. And, uh, that's, yeah. A, that's what I'm going on now, but it looks like it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. At least you can grow a beard. I can't... I yeah, can't I mean, listen, I mean, I, I bicked my head years ago, because when I first thought it's going, like, mm-hmm. I, and I mean, like, I must have just been out of school, so probably like right. 19, 20, mm. and I did, but I had no beard at that point, and when I took all the hair off the head... The eyebrows just got so much bigger. <laughs> and like, again, when you're at it. That's why people shave their pubes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Fuck's sake, it's if anything, it makes it look. You know, my, mine looks like a wee, like a, a raccoon that's been hit by a car. When it's right. been shaved, it's just all just compressed. Flat. Just flat, <laughs> compressed, bloody and brown. You know, it's a horrible thing. But no, I, I don't know what happened. Like, I've shaved my head badly twice, and it's caused the scene on both occasions. I How did you shave your head badly? Because the first time my, my battery, this is years before it was rechargeable, right. the batteries ran out and on the house, so I looked like it had a lobotomy, so the front was done, <laughs> but the back was kind of <laughs> just in place. <laughs> and, and again, both of these, these incidents coincided, and I, they definitely weren't my mum's birthday both times, but they involved, 
Going was it out. your present to her? Yeah, but like, <laughs> but now the the big one was definitely her birthday. But I remember being out for dinner with that. That big as in wedge. You went for oh, a full I, wedge. I shift? went for the full. I right. Got, okay. I started and I just couldn't. Stop. I remember that was the biggest rebellious thing you, you could do when you were in uh, secondary school. Yeah. Did you get a wedge shift? I did. Aren't yeah. I? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Wedge but I I didn't do it because I wanted to be rebellious. I did because I didn't like black people. But that's, right. You yeah. know that yeah. was. Yeah. But I'm on grown out of that now. You've, it's you've okay. Grown out of it, yeah. Still a wee bit iffy on the gays, but, but uh, you know, don't worry, it'll, it'll come round. You know, it'll, it'll come round. But <laughs> no, but the first time it was just a she- it was just a one, right? It was just mm-hmm. a, a one and a clip fell off and the bottom of me. And I remember being out for dinner and wearing a hat, like wearing a trilby hat. <laughs> and like, uh, like you know what your parents you would still be like, you need to put a shirt on. And I was wearing like a short sleeve shirt and a trilby hat. I looked like a fat inspector gadget out for dinner. <laughs> what? You look like a fat oh, president from the Lost Boys. I didn't, I didn't it was terrible <laughs> and then the other time was it was my mum's birthday and I remember being in my granny's house and I'd done it the, right, right to the bone like wet and the whole way down and I hadn't realised that when you're fully big bald it's like a velcro on your head so uh, I put a hat on it was like fuck 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 <laughs> So I was sitting in the you hat. You need to lube up your yeah, head so you put a hat on. Fucking terrible. <laughs> and like that happened to me the first time I shaved this. Like I came out of the shower, got the tile in my head, and fucking hair broke my neck. I was like, oh bollocks. But whenever I was in, in my granny's house, my mum was working, she came home and, and I was wearing a hat. And the first thing she came around the corner and she goes, What the fuck are you wearing a hat indoors for? And I was like, Oh, surprise! And she just broke down. She just started crying right there. And I was like, Oh, I see what have you done? I was like, I'm just and she goes, You're so ugly. It's like what? No, 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 no. Same face because you're so fucking ugly. Think about that. It's like oh, I thought no. maybe you were going to say, "Oh my god!" You, it, it, it looked like you may be sick. Yeah, no, and, no. You know, you might have had so some ugly. sort of. Thought. I was worried. And that's what broke. But no, you're just so no. ugly. Yeah, so it's ugly. It's like we're going out for dinner tonight. <laughs> I can't be seen in public with you. Put that fucking trilby back on. <laughs> fucking trilby, get back. <laughs> I've only worn that trilby twice. I think it was my granddad's or my dad's. And the thing about it was, it was one like, time was dinner. Yeah. <laughs> At one time at dinner, uh, and that was it. But it was, it was burgundy. It wasn't even a fucking normal trilby. Like please, a, tell me a was, pimp. please tell me oh, there's. I'm gonna have to find it because it was. Did you have a key in and all that? <laughs> I mean, that if, see now I would have been. Like, I need to. I need to accessorize this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But like yeah. at the time, you know, now you always think you look. That's a lot old. of balls, but they go out to fucking a, a burgundy trilby. But my mum was like, you can't wear a peak hat or you look like a spy. You know, she said, and I was like, so now what they look like instead? I look like your auntie or a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a good look at all. So I was fucking <laughs> sitting, beating scalps in the <laughs> Oh man, I need I need to find it. But there there were photos of me totally, but and it was oh, it was horrendous. And the beard is, thank God, a saving grace, because I never even when I was Younger and leaner, yeah. still no chin. I still just right. was like straight head and the neck. <laughs> There's nothing there. Like so, I mean, I think like I, sh- I remember shaved once, and Catherine said she was doing nights. When you first started going out, came home, didn't know who was in bed. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That was some other again ugly bastard. Who's that fat ugly bed? bastard in my bed <laughs> with no like, hair? It's, it's me again. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Well, now uh, you look less like the evil villain from Superman 2. Yes. Yeah, that's, which, that's helped yeah. a lot, yeah. That's but there was, did, you, did you ever see that photo? Some bastard I put up, I was doing a gig somewhere, and I had a black jacket on, mm-hmm. and like a salmon-coloured shirt, but the jack, jacket zipped up the about here, and it was just that much, looked like a new skin, the beard and the hair. I looked exactly like that bastard from yeah. Superman 2. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't. But no, I, I used to have my head shaved all the time, and then, uh, uh, I, I don't know, I just decided to... I just, thought fuck it let it go and I, I married a hairdresser like so no yeah. excuse like I could have had something to look after but uh, so I had a, a, a birthmark here like a grey patch uh-huh. and on old photographs you can see the grey patches there I didn't realise when you grew it out then it would be what you know I was saying yeah. a, grey, a grey streak but I the first time I got it done I walked in and my daughter was like oh my god daddy you look like Robbie Williams and I was like <laughs> Yeah, fucking oh, right. Nice. Happy days, and she went. No, that's not a compliment. Yeah, and I was like, Oh, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> my, my wife comes in. She went, Mommy, doesn't he look like Robbie Williams? She went, he fucking wishes. <laughs> <laughs> More like fucking Blobby Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Like you gotta get, you gotta give it to wives and kids. Like they make you feel great. No, I, oh, I, there's no they, fucking. They make you feel brilliant. <laughs> not like being grounded by a fucking twelve year old. No, fuck, I mean my my big one there. She's turned into a right fucking twat already. Oh. Singing things. She comes into me this morning. She goes, Dad, you mum told me that you've a lot to remember today, and I don't think you're gonna do it. <laughs> And I said, she's going to the beach for school. And that was it. You know, it's like, I'm sure I'll cope. <laughs> I don't know. There's you a know? bag to be packed and all that. What age is she, the eldest? Five. Oh, man. So she's you're five. Right, and you know? Here, two. small kids, small problems. Yeah. And see, this mm-hmm. is what, I, get big, what I was hoping to hear. Does it not get better? No. Or does it just change? 
It changes, but it changes. The, the stress gets worse mm -hmm. because at the moment the stress is, would you leave me alone? Yeah. And then it turns to, where the fuck is she? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Two different types of stress, but you're like, oh, where, where, where are you? Where in Texas? Where the fuck yeah. are you? And she's like, yeah. I'm 19. Let me know. Yeah. I'm at university. <laughs> fuck off. You're Robbie Williams like a bastard. Leave me in peace. Take yeah. fat. Yeah. <laughs> no. But no, see, that's It does. It, it's, it, it, they're, they're at the good time now. Like. Yeah. And you've got the period now where they want to spend time with you. Yeah. That stops. And see, then they'll they'll allow you to drop them off at school. That stops. Mm -hmm. You know, all that so stuff. So they'll just be around the corner and just... There's about a three or four year period. Oh, you won't even be allowed around the corner. You'll be, it'll be 100 yards, 150 yards away from the school. Yeah. Drop me here. Well, I mean, ho hopefully by then the, the legal requirement that I have to be that far away from school will be lifted. Well, absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. We're help. hoping, fingers crossed, help, you know, yeah. touch wood and all that. Yeah. But, but I know, I, I just, because obviously being a, a father of girls. Mm, like two it's, years, yeah. It's, it's just, it's stressful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And like I always, in my head, right, now you're going to bring me down to earth here and I don't really want, but in my head I think, right, get them up to be about, when they're about 10, they'll be more interested in their mum, makeup going shopping and stuff like that I'll just be me and my dog just happy as Larry in peace no no, no. you become a mixture of a, a taxi driver slash a punch bag mm -hmm. yeah you'll get the grief of a lot because there's boys that are annoying her mm -hmm. and then you're the only boy she can really take it out on mm -hmm. so but then do you not then go listen I'll take it out on these boys I, I still I still be at that crack I still mm -hmm. give them the evils there two boys in the house last night and I was like Alright. Yeah. Hey, Fuck you didn't here? Yeah. Did they, did they ever warm to you? Do you ever have a boyfriend where you're like, oh he's alright? Uh yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, I, I, I find it I've I do find it strange. Yeah. I'm very obviously liberal and, and open minded mm -hmm. and all the rest and you know, she's nineteen for fuck's sake. Yeah. But it's still I don't know, she's still my wee year, like, you know, yeah. I mean? and that sort of protective thing. I don't think it'll ever leave you, like it'll still be there. But yeah. Because Holly says to me the other week, she goes I see Ethan. I shouldn't actually name him, but I've done it anyway. She goes, yeah, fuck it. Another five year Nathan, say, yeah, Nathan, yeah. Nathan. She goes, so you see Nathan? And I said, yeah, yeah. And she goes, I had to break up with him this week. <laughs> and in what scenario? She goes, yeah, well, she, he wasn't my boyfriend, but then he hit me. And I was like, oh, did he now? And I was like, fuck, where'd he hit you? And she goes, punched me in the arm. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I don't have to go in and kick his fucking, <laughs> thank God. Um, Nathan would have got fucking busted. I know, wrecked, because it was, it was coming up, it was the week, maybe the day off sports day, so <sighs> I was going into school, you were so going. I thought I could do a wee mm -hmm. sneaky trip here, a wee bosh on Nathan, but thankfully, <laughs> thankfully I was Trip him an egg has been raised now. Yeah, I have had your bastard. I'd be like Roy Keane over him, you fucking, <laughs> touch my daughter, did you, you cunt? Yeah. Get up, you cunt. <laughs> Well, no, I don't like the idea of it at all. It is anyway. scary, and it's more. It's more to, to to really bring it down to old people talking here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's it is more scary now because everything is so open. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, f sexual things that you would have been. I know, I'm, like, for, like you just didn't talk about it in your man does. You yeah. know what I mean? And now there's things to discuss that are just open and I'm like I, I don't need to hear these things yeah. I don't want to hear these things mm -hmm. I'll go to my wee shed yeah. and I'll sit in there and cry but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah things just just weird things you know and that's the changing of the times you know you yeah. have to like there was no there's conversations I've had with my daughter for instance that like might I would never have had with us even as boys yeah. never mind girls but yeah. Um, uh, yeah I think it's a positive I think because I I, cause I I would imagine like Obviously, I, I love having the kids now. They're mm. great, and I'm sort of the fun one. They love to always be around daddy and blah, blah, blah. But I can see myself very much regressing into being like an old Presbyterian Paisley. And I, just be like, no, no, no. I've no. been very Paisley-like in a few yeah. occasions. Like When I first found out that she was sent dick pics. Wow. And how, uh, Can uh, I ask, uh, and how did you discover that? Was you at told? At 16. Or you, oh, no. And when no. I, because I asked, uh -huh. I was like, just out of curiosity, have you ever had anybody send you stuff you uh -huh. never wanted? She went, yeah, all the time. I was like, oh my oh, fucking no. God, I want their names and addresses. Uh -huh. And I don't give a fuck who their dad is, because yeah. he'll bother them too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but it is, it's, it's the new thing, it's just, I suppose, and that's... See what, I, see I what just, you're asking that, because I'd be thinking, she'll say no and it'll reassure me, and that would be my, my 90% percent mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. And when she said, I would just lose it, and I'd be like, no, no, no. It was. It, it came about because I think, funnily enough, Mickey was talking about it. Yeah, shocker! It wasn't Mick, though. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey you fucking part of the What about a past him? <laughs> uh, but Mickey, I mean, it's a way. It was a conversation that happened, and and uh, I remember saying to 
to my wife, I was like, ah, that's that's mm-hmm. mad. Because me and her are together from school. Yeah. So we were together all throughout. So she got Polaroids. So she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was weird going to boots collecting the fucking <laughs> collecting the photos. Like, hey, no, nah, one keep that one keep yeah. on. Perfect. No, Sandra, I don't like that one. That <laughs> angle's not good. The lighting was terrible. Yeah, but I'll just stick it no So uh, yes, yeah, so we've never. And even now to this day, so yeah. I've never sent it like quick, ever. Let's do it now. Let's post it stories. <laughs> I don't know. Have we got a? Have we got a small enough camera? This one. It's four D. Four four, four K. K. Is it? I oh, said four D. There. I'm fucking. In there. <laughs> you can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> and this hate you in one. <laughs> I came in now. In fairness, I thought you were eating egg and onion sandwiches, but I, oh, I, no. I don't know what. I, I've only been here for two minutes before you got here. <laughs> mm. Yeah, right. No, enough. How, how was that one resolved? Did you just did you have to follow up on that? And take it, it was just a case of uh, you see you have to have then these com- then you have to have these conversations yeah. of you do know that's not right and they shouldn't yeah. be doing that and uh, <laughs> and I was like you know realistically they should be reported and she went well, all of them and I was like well, how many fucking were there? <laughs> I get out. So I, uh, I was like I don't know. I just I can't yeah. you know. And the thing is, this I said this before um, through my work with community and stuff. And days gone by, the safest place for most people, I know there's obviously serious uh, anomalies, but for most people, the safest place you could be was your home. Yeah. No matter who was fighting with you outside or who was trying mm-hmm. to bully you or whoever it was, when you got home, as long as you know home life is okay, yeah. you were fine. That was your safe place. Yeah. Now it's the most fucking dangerous place to be. Yeah. Because they can all come in. <laughs> Every yeah. cunt you didn't want anywhere near you can all come into your house through your device. Oh, no. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking, it's a strange one. But you know, it's about resilience, isn't it? Like you yeah. have to try and. Uh, well, you, you take a lot of drugs, like I do, just yeah. to sort of get through it. But you know, it's. And I can see me getting onto that. Ah, uh, you might have to get onto a few edibles or something. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what I'm looking at now, like again, I I was always quite a, you know, I, I like to believe that the world's a better place than it is, and yes. I, I've learned I'm wrong. But like, I don't know, I don't know. But our 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 man James Cameron, he comes up every other week in this podcast. Okay. He knows something because he's predicted everything so far. Yes. Jim the knows. avatars. The friggin' Terminators, Skynet, mm-hmm. the it thing. works. Yeah, but That's remember, so weird. I was just listening to him the other day. See, he's he knew I was going to this. Was, yeah, yeah. forget Psychic Glenn. Crazy. Yeah, he's <laughs> you know, and you know what? He probably was telling his brother some shit too, and that's why. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but oh, it's so mean. He was a great director too. Um, but he, uh, it's not one of his films, but just you know, Minority Report. Mm-hmm. Seen that film? Same thing. Yeah. But see, way in that they're like the technology's all fucking. Is that what's going to be with dick pics in the future? They're just going to be fucking flying. Do you know what the fucking four day round? Yeah, it could be all yeah. right, but then you actually yeah. smell and go, oh, yeah. there's Dave's. <laughs> it's going to be like you're in a fucking giant aquarium, but instead of fish, it's just dicks flying past. You fucking around. It's the size of that one. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's spoil you. <laughs> Look at that. We want to keep popping in the house and won't come out. <laughs> <That's Persist. mine. laughs> uh, mine would just be sitting in the corner facing away. Just. <laughs> but yeah, you don't know because like, that's, that's VR and all the toys. Uh, yeah, all of it's. I mean, I, I don't know where it stops. And I, I remember saying that 10 years ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's moving so fast. AI is moving so fast. That again, as you say, the like Terminator should tell you that yeah. you know it's Cause when you just, watch it, just let it slow down a wee bit. Yeah. Don't let it go so fast. Have you seen what's happened just in two months? How fast with, with AI, AI? Has le- what has learned in two months? Yeah, it's, we mightn't get to the end of the year. No, it's and then you don't know what all those other boys are working on. And now, for 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 if you don't understand when I say those other boys, mm-hmm. I mean China. Yeah, what those guys are, who knows? They, yeah, because uh, like, did you see the thing? That was on was on the news the other week that they had some sort of like retinal. Be careful how I say that mm-hmm. recognition for people driving the car and like when they went through this thing, they're like they could tell you it was and it's yep. and their, their social credit score. Yeah. So their your credit score is based on how you behave in the day. Yeah. So you get points for certain things. So if mm-hmm. you did something good, you get plus points. If you you know smoked four cigarettes and it's yeah. minus some points. Uh, <coughs> and then what's so, yeah. the prize for that Squid Game? The, the prize is they're going to allow you to access your money. See, they own it, don't they? They'll, they'll, all, they'll have control of your money, yeah. Because all the banks are going for this fucking digital currency, the central, mm-hmm. the central bank digital currency. So that's the fear factor of people. Now everybody's like, yeah. oh, these guns are going to actually... So if I get drunk and mm-hmm. stay out too long, yeah. I won't be able to get access to my no. bank. My mum would actually love that. <laughs> See, my dad, he'd be like, Fuck, he's blocked, he's not allowed the money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll be an officer because he's a fucking nightmare when he's at a pint like... Yeah, um, and that's so it is scary. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's uh, 
the idea of it's good that we all behave, yeah. but who dictates yeah. what behaviour is good and what's bad? Because even now, like you look at you look at what's going on in the trends of even what, even taking it back to like comedy, even back to what you can and can't say, what's offensive, mm. and it's that sort of whole like the, the left and the right are such a circle that they're almost touching around the middle. So it's like who it, can dictate? What's, it's almost like it's flipped. Yeah, it's very strange. It's very weird how they've done it, uh, and 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 I, you're watching it in real time because mm-hmm. you can see it happen. You see it change. You're going, oh, I used to believe that. Am yeah. I on this side now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, have I changed? I, I didn't think it changed sides, but so oh. it's changing so often. You're just like, oh, I need to. You have to try and keep up, especially for our game. Yeah. But uh, that's why I try and keep any stuff I try and do sort of autobiographical. I, I yeah. try not to touch topical subjects mm-hmm. as such because. Ultimately, you're probably going to fucking offend somebody. Yeah, but then is that a reason to stop doing it? You know, see, I don't know. You look at all the comedians over the years. I yeah, mean, they, they they were the ones who who actually changed narratives and changed thinking. Yeah, well, um, I, for I, the good. I have a new bit now that's based off a, a an exchange I had with somebody after a gig. It's like, I think it's very offensive what you say about your kids. And I was like, well, do you know them? She was like, no. And I was like, well, there you go. But yeah. I was like, that's. Obviously, I'm joking, you know, and now the bits become, you know, you said that you keep them out the back of the coal shed. How dare you? And blah, blah. I was like, of course, I fucking don't keep them out of coal sheds. 2023, who even has coal in a cage? You know, that sort of thing. But <laughs> And you know the chicken yeah. didn't actually cross the road. No. You know, it was just it was just hanging about. <laughs> but it was, it, it's like, Fuck yeah. But see, I think, I think part of it too is like, and I've seen it a few times with a few uh, of our mates as well, is like, if you react to someone telling you something's bad as if it's bad, mm-hmm. They're like, oh, because like... It justifies them yeah, then, doesn't it? Yeah, because then they... they, they it, like, so say I put something online and someone says, oh, you what you said was offensive there. If I go, oh, fuck, I, I'll take it down. It means maybe my thinking while I put it out was that I was trying to be On offensive. purpose, yeah. Whereas if you go, well, no. what are you talking about? Yeah. So, add know, context, add, yeah. Like, yeah, all that sort of things. And add the fact that you're in a comedy club. And this yeah. is probably maybe the, the issue maybe we have. We need to be more selective about clips that go out or whatever yeah. because a comedy club environment is not the real world. Mm-hmm. But that's the point of it. Yeah. It's to escape the real world and yeah. come in and have a laugh and not to... Yeah. I mean, the, the, we always say uh, in dailies that we don't censor any comedian. Mm-hmm. The audience will do that. Yeah. They'll automatically let you know if that was good enough or that wasn't good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we don't say to people, you can't say this, you can't say that. But I do know some venues, maybe more down south in, yeah. in, in the Republic, but they're sort of like, oh, please don't touch this topic yeah. or that topic. And I'm like, no, 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 all topics can be touched. It's yeah. just how well you do it and if you have the skill to do it. And if you mm-hmm. don't, the audience will soon fucking let you know. But then sometimes too, like as a comedian, I think if you're, you're a good comedian, you know too what you can and can't say. I remember You I should went, know yeah. at this stage of the game. Like you really but should. But I went to one one gig and someone was like it was it wasn't it was in Derry or just outside and someone was like don't make a joke about Leroy McKee I was like who was going to yeah I'm obviously fucking not going to you yeah. know what I mean but it's like they must have had people that are like whether it be on Twitter or online you know making jokes which is fucking abhorrent but I remember you know, hearing a story a daily story before my day before my time before I come in about somebody turning up and was like here I have a joke about doing my bomb mm-hmm. in Oma yeah in dailies and everyone's like mm, maybe not yeah. maybe you shouldn't did they do it? I don't think they did but they got left home very quickly Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they never got back to dailies again uh, I don't know what goes through people's minds do they think well I do know what they think they think maybe being edgy is what's going to mm. get them laughs but yeah. that edgy don't get you laughs I, I, I think now too like we're we're at because there's, there's one bit of yours that I cannot wait for you to stop doing so you can put the clip out because it will be the most viral clip that's ever been local comedy was crack. That? Oh yes, <laughs> you know. So I that, but the, I'm seeing stuff nowadays where like, if, if ever you put a clip up, you go, it's gonna be a good one because you don't just, you know, you don't. I feel like a lot of newer comedians are putting anything, just up, anything yeah. up, and you're yeah. sometimes watching it going, why'd you do that? You yeah. know, that's not funny. It actually, back. it actually came up on our podcast recently, and they went, why is Yum so? Because they call me Yums on podcast. Why yeah. is Yum so elusive? Yeah. Why is it we can find clips of everybody else and not him? And I was mm-hmm. like, well, number one, I can't do them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but number two, I treat every joke like a baby. I was like, I don't want to yeah. give them away. I want to hold on to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, But then I also, you get the likes of the, the McCann's and all that. You go, but Keith, that's what you have to do. You have to yeah. do it online. I'm like, I know, that's what you have to do. But I also really like the fact that, yes, you can see me in the podcast, but if you wanted to see me doing stand-up, you have to see me yeah. in life. Because, I mean, I know it's kind of like the, 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 the Catch-22 where you have to kind of be putting stuff out to promote mm. bits and bobs but at the same time like I, I'm not massively putting clips out because 
I, I'm trying to work now to be as good a stand-up as I can be, so working on that side of things. Yeah, because you like, have to keep working yeah, on it. You can't fucking just lay back. You have to keep. And, and I think, like, with younger acts, like, my point I would say to them is, like, see if some of my earliest stuff was online, <laughs> I'd be absolutely fucking mortified. I'd be like, yeah. get it down. You know, I, I sometimes cringe about when I think about early material. I'm going, yeah. But it's it, but a lot of these new ones are like and I and I've said to a couple who I would sort of who I think are receptive to the the idea that you know I think a lot of of our generation would only say to somebody if they're trying to help them out you know what I mean yeah there's no there's I think no, that's maybe their I think that is sometimes their problem is that they yeah. think because they don't know us they don't know that yeah. we all helped each other get up so yeah. then we genuinely have a, a, an interest in wanting mm-hmm. to do better because here's the thing and I I talked to to Colin Murphy about this I was like for that generation. That's like me when I went to the Empire, my first gig, I think it was, and Jake O'Kane was emceeing. Mm-hmm. No, my second gig, because Mickey emceed the first one. Jake O'Kane was emceeing and had a new bit. I don't even say it because it's so awful. Mm-hmm. But I had a bit, and I and I said to him, I was like, I don't know. And he went, I'm telling you now, don't yeah. do it. And I thought, hmm, and I didn't. Yeah. And I was glad in it because you took the advice from the ones who know yeah. what they're doing. And I've never done it since. I never you know, yeah. put it out there. And even when I think about it now, I go, oh, my yeah. God, if that clip had ever went. And, you know, yeah. it's fucking awful. But, like, like, but some of them, like, I remember saying to the one that was like, don't, you're putting pressure on yourself to get a clip rather than to work on the bit. Yeah. You know, so if you're recording that and going, right, how can I improve the bit? But you're going, oh, I have a set. And, and like, it's like fishing for anything. Yeah. You know, oh, uh, it's, and it, if you're putting the clip up, but crowd work's got to be 10 out of 10. You know, yeah. it can't be a, yeah. I just, and a lot of them you're watching going, that's a bit boring. You know, uh, that's, that's the only clip I think I put up recently as a crowd work one of, mm-hmm. of the Dutch woman that was hackling everybody at yeah. night. But it ended up being like a three minute clip because yeah. she like haggled every bit of the way yeah. through. And she wasn't. She didn't call it hackling. She was just unaware and she yeah. was enjoying it so much. She wanted yeah. to join in. Was that the one on Avery's? Was it? Uh, yeah. yeah. She was something else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. But I th- but I do I think like to to keep moving because again. We didn't the, have this. The, sorry, the, we didn't have the infrastructure that they have now. No, you know, if you think of what, um, like I'm, twelve years or thirteen years now coming, yeah. twelve years, and you know, Mickey and yourselves and other fifteen, yeah. whatever. Like when you started, when I started twelve years ago, like there was nothing. No. There was one gig, uh, one open mic gig in Belfast, and an Empire. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Uh, anything I'd say that Dailies was just starting to maybe yeah. brew, but there was nothing. Uh, if you think of what the wealth of opportunity is yeah. available to young ones now, and, you know, and you hate the sound. I don't mean to say young ones, but yeah. even just new comedians, because yeah. there's some new guys starting that are older than me. But because I think some of them are doing like can you see all these. Yeah, how long have you been doing? Oh, five months. I'm doing a solo show. Don't. No, like, don't. What are you don't. doing? Calm down. Yeah. There's no rush. You don't have to. You, you can, don't have to. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like to be getting paid within your first couple of years is. I think I'm not joking I think it may be five years Mm -hmm. before I got actually you know actual uh, uh, a paid gig that I was asked to do yeah because that's the other thing too I mean I spent five years as a message here can I have a gig yeah and that's what you have to do. Yeah, and yeah. I don't. Know, I'm sure you're the same. But I remember like going to, to Dublin and dying on my fucking arse, like, mm-hmm. and then driving home, knowing I had to go to work the next morning for yeah. nine. Thinking, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Why am I doing this shit? Like, I, I mean, I don't know. I how still I, don't know why. I'm saying. Yeah, like, but I, but I don't know now how I've managed to stick it out. You know, it's yes. like it's wild because in the beginning there is there is there has to be a self destruct element to it, isn't there? There's something there. Like we all humans have it. I think, isn't there? There's some there's, there is some theory that there's. We all have a death wish. Like yeah. people who smoke, friends like myself, uh-huh. know that it kills you, but you still do it. Yeah. You know, there's something in us, like or skydiving or whatever it may be. Yeah. We, we we do it on a nightly basis. Yeah, and it's it, it, <laughs> but like there was one gig I did. I'm not naming the the promoters, but they booked me a gig in Dublin and hadn't told the bar. They hadn't told it. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> I drove down Aaron Butler came down for me to do a work in progress show a couple of years ago for the dad show drove down Dublin there got wiped out by a tram because I drove on the wrong side of the fucking tracks <laughs> but got in went in I was in, in the enter went in because uh, I, I was on their website and all looking to see you know, there's no tell of this show and I was mm-hmm. like I went in, there's no posters anywhere. I was like, went upstairs and all the, you know, way there's no mic around up there. Yeah. It's just all this, it looked like it just being fucking mm-hmm. no lights, nothing. I went down and it's like, oh, I have a gig on tonight. No. I said, no, you do. I said, it should be in the book. And I was like, here's the emails and all. No, no. And then I said, has so-and-so not booked it? And he was like, nah. And I was like, <laughs> well. So me and Butler went for ice cream and kicked away <laughs> Dublin for half an hour and then fucking went the road again. again. Yeah, it was. And then during the enter, you said, no, there's no mic. I didn't yeah. know that. My first time, first time ever doing it. Uh-huh. Oh. 
So standing in the in the hallway, you know, in the hallway, and you're, yeah. you're 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 only seeing the audience. You can't see the stage. I remember turning to whoever it was 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 on first or after me. I said, I, I can't hear the MC. I said, is, is the mic working? He went, What mic? And I went, What? <laughs> and I went, There's no mic. And I was just about being brought on stage. And I was yeah. like, oh, I've never done a. And you talk about what am I doing with my yeah. hands? Where, where <laughs> so, oh, strange. so strange. So but see, strange. like uh, that something. They brought, brought one in there recently. They brought yeah, it in now. The mic's in there. Yeah. And I, you know what? People are like, oh, I prefer. I'm glad they have a mic. Absolutely, yeah. it's definitely needed. Like, but I, I did a gig there a couple of weeks ago, and it was one of the uh, one of the times I went to do a gig, and I was like, you know what? I, I, I feel nice now because if the, I went, if this had happened me five years ago, I'd have shit myself. Yeah. So, I was booked to do a gig, and I was told it's going to be in the gazebo. It's going to be mic set up whatever blah blah and I, I knew where it was and I, I was driving past it to have a look on the way around because mm-hmm. you can either go with one eye and then this way or you can right, look okay. around and see so I looked around and I didn't see any gazebo oh, I, was like, fuck. I saw like an it's a knockout style setup, and like I went oh this is interesting and I went around mm-hmm. got there now the guy that was running it's a good friend of mine I, and he was like, so wh- wh- why do you want to do this? <laughs> and I was kind of like, oh, well, you told me before. <laughs> and he was like, ah. Oh. And then it was like, right, he goes, you can either, everyone can go into the club and you can do it there. And my, he's like, we've got a, a karaoke mic and a thing. And I went, well, or, or else, where, where else can we go? And he's like, oh, you could go outside. And I was like, right. And I could see that there were people outside having pints, enjoying the sun. I was the like, last they thing they they is take them inside. The, yeah. inside. So yeah. I was like, no, they look happy enough. We'll gather them together. We'll do it with no mic, just mm-hmm. out in the sun, and end up being a lovely gig. Maybe you know, but yeah. but if you did it for that five years ago, you go no, get them inside. We need yeah, to set yeah, up and, and absolutely, be. yeah. You're afraid, and that's experience, this one. Yeah. And I suppose that's like it's like any fucking job, isn't it? You, the more yeah. experience you get, the, the more confidence you have in it, whatever. But yeah, and you do wonder sometimes if people booking comedians without thinking it through. I don't mean for like a vent like that because it's it's outdoor. Yeah. but I mean like going to a venue. Yeah, going to a, a bar that's put on a comedy night, and you're like, all the lights are on. Mm-hmm. Seats are all people's backs yeah. to the stage. You're like, yeah. what are you? Do- what are you doing? There are some basic things of mm-hmm. running a show that but you that, should that's do. Some things and like, see if I, some nights I was running pugs and people didn't have it set as it should. When I got there, I would put me in such bad twist. Yeah, I'd be like, how many times do I have to say yeah. it's just basic stuff? And then you're in bad twist and you have to go on MC and be all like, ah, and you're really just. Going I know we had that in dailies too, where uh, I had to stop. I had to get somebody else in um, to be like the. Usher slash mm-hmm. showrunner, whatever you want to call yeah. it, because when say you had a slow night and you needed mm-hmm. to move people up the front, yeah, kind of like the people who are out having a pint that you're talking about, you can't be the person that goes up and interrupts people and go and makes them move to the yeah. front and then get up on stage and go, "Hi guys, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like, not gonna work." Fun, yeah. yeah, there's that fucker made us move, yeah. so you have to try and find somebody mm-hmm. else, and that's uh, yeah, it definitely helps. Like, it makes it <laughs> take the blame yeah. off you, like because but, you've hard enough job to fucking make them laugh. But remember too, like earlier days as well, starting out being like really panicked if everyone wasn't quiet and listening. Whereas I said, I don't know where I was chatting to before, but I did a gig with the Sean had booked, and it was in the GAA club. It was the middle of nowhere. I thought it was going to be quiet. There must mm-hmm. have been about three hundred in there, and I was in a big sports hall. It's fucking, mm-hmm. it was wild. Like the whole thing was wild. And the bar was open and I was chatting all at the bar. And I thought, you know what? This is what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So let's just, you know, whoever's listening is listening. There's no point. Because before yeah. it would have been like, here, would you just fuck? And then you, you do that, they'd be like, yeah, no, you get fuck the, you. And you lose yeah. everyone. So, and again, ended up being a pleasant gig. But it's just, like you say. Because the audience sometimes does that for you. Yeah. Because all it, like, as we know, all it takes is one person or a small group to ruin a night. Mm-hmm. But if it's a crowd they get and... Two thirds are enjoying it, or three quarters yeah. want it. Well, the re- the rest will be told to be quiet yeah. by their own. And then too, you forget as well that there are so many people who maybe don't even know what a comedy gig is, and they just appear at these things. So it's like a social eye will go, and we just get blocked yeah. and whatever. And it's like, no, no, you have to. You know. I I know I'm a stickler for it, and people like other comedians might fucking laugh at me for it. But I, every time I MC, I do housekeeping. Mm-hmm. I see. I think it's a good idea. It's just like like I say, one person is all it takes to ruin yeah a show. And if you haven't, and like you said, if this is a person's first time at a comedy gig, yeah. you can't blame them for interrupting the show if they didn't know what the rules are. Yeah, well, that's a fair point. Like, I've never been there before, so you have to yeah. let them know this is what we do. You can have to crack with me as MC, but the yeah. acts are on, you know. But people don't do that. And that's, no. it's, it's, fuck, I always find this the basics. Because that's the thing too, isn't it, with, with MC as well? Like, there has to be a bit of a balance of bits and audience when interaction work, yeah. so if you do the, like if you just went and did audience but interaction and I came on to do a set they'd be like well why aren't you talking to me ah, so you, yeah. have to kinda, you have to keep that yeah and it's that's, a hard act like, and, uh, I, I prefer MC to be honest yeah. it's my yeah I, I prefer to be thinking on my feet than, than yeah. trying to remember 
Yes, yeah, my memory, my memory wouldn't be great oh, there. Well, I don't know. Be, just, maybe it's just old age. Maybe yeah, yeah, it must be old be, age. Could be. <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't know. I, I quite. I think for me, my my favorite thing to do is a, is a, a solo show. I think that's now like. Well, I held off on that for ten years and yeah. eleven years and did it for the first time there. And what do you think of it? I you did it. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was the first time I'd ever done it. Obviously, so um, I'd done an hour show back in twenty fifteen in my hometown. Was basically it was just my friends and family, yeah. you know, and that was alright. But uh, I'd held off, and then when I did, I, I'm so used to either um, giving either a set slot on a lineup, or if I'm lucky enough, I'll be closing or whatever yeah. headline. Um, but you still know you have a set time, yeah, and you're trying to thrash it through because you you know you might be the fourth act on, or I mean, audiences only have a certain length of yeah. time they can pay attention, so you might be losing them. So you, you see that freedom of getting up and having the hour, yeah, and maybe going a bit longer if you wanted, or you know that that was nice. Now I have to say, yeah. uh, something I could get used to. Yeah. I just have to write another hour worth of material. Yeah. But <laughs> but see, that's another thing as well. Like I think with again, because the scene's great here. Yeah, it's 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 almost you take it for granted that in in a regular scene, people wouldn't really be churning out an hour a year, no. you know, by by any stretch. And no. I actually was going to take this year off. Mm-hmm. from doing it and just to work on it and then just as it would I was just t- churning out enough and I was like oh, I could do it yeah could do an hour here the opportunity for the venue came up and I was like oh, let's do it you know that's it but like the last time I did it when I did my last solo show I remember when the first work in progress show I did an hour and, th- an hour and 20 mm-hmm. and then by the final one it was 58 and I was like that's it and I was able to just rework it in the fun of like almost the puzzle yeah figuring it out that's and and I've I've been lucky enough to uh be the warm-up guy for you know, quite a few over the the, the years. So uh, Shane is who I started with, mm-hmm. and then uh, Mickey for a short period of time, and then now Murphy. And you you learn from all of them. Yeah. You know when you're watching, especially if it's a run, mm-hmm. um, and you're watching how they have changed their set from the first night to the last night. And I'm, I'm most recently I'm watching Murphy. I'm going, why'd you do that? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, the rhythm was better in this one, and it was moving gradually. So he yeah. grades his bits. Uh-huh. As to how the audience responded to them, right? Okay, like a one, two, or three. Yeah, one being shit, three being good. And he was like, oh, "That was a three. You need to move that." You know, and I was like, yeah. "That's a good way." You know, you should yeah. categorize and prioritize just based on the audience reaction, not how much you like it or how yeah. much you think it's good. What do they think? Yeah, and he changed his whole ending to suit. Uh-huh. You know, and I was like, "Fucking, that's 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 brave, and that's but that's also experience." Yeah, but that's I see that's it. the thing is always, I'd always go, "You need a good bit to start and finish." Yeah, and then absolutely. you need to try, and then if you can keep it going at that standard whole way, great. But yeah. there's always a couple of wee bits that the tail off, and then it depends where you do the bits too. I remember yeah. going to see Tiernan uh, in Edinburgh, and he announced to the audience, I don't know what number night, maybe it was night number fifteen or whatever he was doing. Mm. Anyway, I'm just going to let you know between the thirty three and the thirty eight minute mark, it just dips. Yeah, I don't know if it's the heat of the room, I don't know if it's the, mat- I don't know what yeah. it is, but it dips. Yeah, just going to let you know, but it comes back. Yeah. And you're watching him, and I love him. Like I idolize him. I yeah. watch him, watch him. And then after a while, I thought, I locked down. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I was like, all right, okay, I can see now. So he was yeah. obviously watching, like how they're behaving and yeah. how their uh, attention spans. And I was like, fuck, I never thought about that. Yeah. He was that precise to go. I know it dips at this point. And and I th- I always say that that's why a headliner doesn't deal with that because you're only in for thirty minutes, yeah. forty minutes. But the hour, I'm mm-hmm. I, I always wanted to bring the music into the comedy yeah. to break it up because if I you know if you took out a guitar yeah. and they're just but then, I'm sure, I started comedy and I seen another fat fucker with a guitar, and I yeah. thought, nah. <laughs> but it's like I knew myself. That's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? And it's, it's such a fun. And again, I think too, the older you get, it, it's not a job. You're like, I'm past it. You like, you, I like doing this more, and it's. Yeah, because I think well, then what happens with age is that your fucking your whole perspective changes. And you get fucking more angry. You get more angry, more fed up, and yeah. you're more. But then you're. Um, I always find it's more justified. Yeah. Like my daughter said the other day, you're such a dad, aren't you? And I went, uh-huh. yeah, because I'm your dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? What I mean, but yeah. she went, no, but I mean, you don't talk much, and you just, hmm. and I was like, hi, yeah, I'm a dad. Because you take so much. Like, I don't know if this was a bit or someone had said this, but it was. Uh, I, Catherine was telling me a list of things. I got to the point where I was just going, and she was, you're not listening anymore. And I went, I don't have any capacity to listen or retain any more information. So I was like, I'm, there's no point in me going, oh, yeah. It's yeah. like, I can't. You've given me so many things that I need to remember. Yeah. I just can't do it anymore. It's not happening. Yeah. She was like, that's it. And I was like, I don't think it's ignorant. I think it's the opposite, because yeah. I could just go and then forget it. It's like, just send me a text. At least that way. Voice note text. You know, just something like that, so I know. Uh, my wife learned very early on when... Uh, our now 19 year old was about five or six and I just you know 
I'm not, as you can tell, much of a fashion guru. You know, so I don't really know. Like I am, like honestly, I'm mm-hmm. not color blind, but when it comes to fashion, I am. Yeah, I have no idea what matches and what goes with things, yeah. and I have no idea. And so I also would have that uh, thing with with her. I was like, well, whatever you want to wear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to go walk into uh, my wife's sand to collect the car and all the rest. And it was about half a mile walk, and it was raining. Mm-hmm. But this was like. More or less shorts and a vest, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife still tells the story of coming in, and I'm like, "All right, how's it going?" She looks down the child. She's blue. Yeah. <laughs> so the hair soaking, and she's that cold. Her fucking lips are turning blue, and I don't even notice yeah. it. So like, what have you got? I was like, ah. "So from that day uh, until well, until she could dress herself, maybe about you know, <laughs> piece out, whatever." To that day, there was an outfit left out yeah. every Saturday because I'm married a hairdresser, so yeah. I haven't had a Saturday in twenty or nineteen years. Yeah. So every Saturday, an outfit is left out, and now for the younger one, yeah. a, an outfit is left out. See, I think that's fair. Like, and I'm a wee bit less than yourself, but in terms of that, because I'm every other weekend. Right. She's doing shifts in the hospital, so every okay. other weekend, if we have dancing on the Saturday morning, it's like you need to get her a ch- get her. It's the hair I'm bad at. The, I'm not. I'm still can't do the hair can't at all. Do it. Cannot do. And like it. this is the thing, like you're. I've, man, do, I've done them all. Too big. Too big. The hands are too big, big. and then the problem. No, but you don't, don't know what's like living with a hairdresser. Oh. I, who then, because it's second nature to them, they're yeah. like, "How can you not do that?" And I'm like, yeah. "Look, you watched me yeah. do it. <laughs> you seen how I fucked it up. Yeah. I can't get that to fucking." Yeah. And then, <laughs> so I would just grab all the hair. Yeah. <laughs> and put it in, and she's yeah. like, "Take sections." I was like, "Sections of what? I don't yeah. know what you're talking about." <laughs> <laughs> like it's together. Fucking leave me alone. No. Like it was one. Day I, d- I remember the Hoover. Have you tried the Hoover trick? No, I haven't tried that yet. Because we have a shark and just fucking her head all. Alright. <laughs> 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 oh, I remember getting the Henry and just yeah. putting the hair in and putting the fucking bobble on straight after. Yeah. I was like, oh, and did it work? It worked. Fucking treat. Because again, but again, no, I didn't do it in sections. No, I don't know if my dad's just telling me this, but I heard a rumor that inside the top of the Hoover there was a blade. So oh shit! I don't oh, know why that's right. to cut your dick off because he's like he's gonna buckle. <laughs> Or else I put her in. Whoa, 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 and I, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, Why, why was this piece of information passed on to you? I don't know because it's like you know. Did, did you have the luck of somebody like, who would look like I a, think, a Henry? I, th- I think I had somebody that would like, like at least give it a rattle, you know? Because he's like, you know, where your showers get yeah. longer, <laughs> and your man went, he's at well, it. The worst, I tell you, one of my worst <laughs> memories in life was, and, I, and again, I thought I had this shit figured out. I thought I was like a fucking a wank, a wank ninja, right? Nah. But every like my dad would have read the sun back in the day, mm-hmm. you know, and obviously page three. Yep. The, they've got the drug was out, the big daddy yep. just out and the page three was a fantastic time. Rest in peace, page yep. three. I would have would have got them probably fifteen, sixteen, but it gives a read up paper mm-hmm. and wait for a dump here. Yep. And that's you know, whatever, blah blah blah. I th- I it was a public service. Yeah, class. But it, it would have it would have continued for a long time. And I remember it was on holidays one year, my dad's mate was there and I was like, grab the paper and he goes, Wait for a wank mate. And I was like, <sighs> Mortified. Like, no, what the fuck? And I was like, "How's he rumbled me?" Because he, yeah, how does he and know? Then was like, what the fuck? And then clearly, it's like, "Oh, that's exactly what that is there for." Yeah, because you know? that fucker's used it yeah. earlier on. <laughs> but it was, it was wild. Like, I suppose see now looking back, that's probably because we didn't have internet in the phones, and also page three would have been. I just have this vision you come out going, "What do you think of Nikki Twenty Two fucking yeah. software engineer?" <laughs> I just love their wee views on things. Oh, I you know, wee, wee like political, a wee political tidbit. Putin's exactly. wee bit of a bollocks, isn't he? And you're like, oh, I. <laughs> and this to the north side. Like, and then I remember, I, I, I don't know when it was, but I think it was the 90s sometime where things got, equality was was proper. Yeah. Because we had paid seven. Which was what? A lad. Was it, I didn't know that. Oh, what I paid that? Son. Son. Paid oh, seven. Wow. Yeah. That's paid good. three and paid seven. So I was going to say, like, just the top of No, I think what there. happened was... It maybe highlighted to the son mm-hmm. who the readership was. Yeah. Men in vans. Yeah. Who didn't want to see paid seven. No. So I here do you know what happens to me now? I just thought of that there and I thought, did I just make that up? Mm-hmm. I might have just made that up. Paid seven? But I'm nearly sure there was something about a paid seven, either in the sun or the star, and it was a man. That's what topless. Google, I wouldn't see. Page seven. I mean I, Page I seven love topless or whatever. There was I, I might have made that up. But I, I remember there was something about because remember, it's the first time I got hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems to be a thing, page seven. Is it? So, yes, yeah, it's just a lot of time. Oh, there you are. Oh, sorry, there you go. Yeah. There, look at that. That's definitely a son. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a 90s. There you go, I see? A mullet uh, the, pa- the page seven fella. He's there actually, go. He's, in, he's in trend now at the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was Paul from Neighbours. I was going to say, go ahead. And <laughs> then, I thought he might have had the meat out now. No, I don't think the meat out. He only opens a couple of buttons. Oh, God, just to you show. Know, you know what's in there. You know what's there. It's a Oh, it's growling to get out. Just. It's absolutely just dying to get out of here. 
There you are. Paid seven. Right, I don't forget. Uh, you need to go soon, so we'll get into these questions. We've got a few questions oh, for you. Fuck. I seen so, you put up a thing of a question. I thought this would yeah. be good because the amount of fucking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the boys who don't like me no. for the uh, conspiracy theory stuff, like I. But listen, you just you just nearly launched in the conspiracy theory it. page seven there. But but I was right to be right. I was right. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> but listen, a wee bit a wee bit softer. Start. Sam wants to know what's your favourite sandwich. Oh, I'm a big bacon and egg man. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. hard. hard to beat on a yeah. so, on a soft bit of bread. Soft oh. bit of bread. No, or do no, you buy these pre-made or is it in the house job? I can do both. Right. Okay. If it's in the house, it's a it's mixed. Mm-hmm. If it's in the shop, it has to be separate. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see. And we, would you when you're doing it in the house, is it scrambled or do you do like would you put a fry on a bit of toast? No, no, no. It's no. boiled eggs and it's be cold. No, like a sandwich, yeah. proper sandwich. Okay. Um. No, if I'm doing like a hot fry, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm into. Poached, you know, yeah, but no, you poached, of course, because athletes, uh, uh-huh. be, you know, like, keep, well. me, keep me figure up, like, yeah. but well, it's, um, hard. it's hard. To, like, I, I love a, a good sandwich, but a good sandwich sandwiches definitely. are either shite or amazing. Yeah, there's no just it, it was grand. I'm, I do like a prawn baguette. Mm. I have to say, now, I know there was a lot of slick for United fans uh, back in the day from Roy Keane about the prawn yeah. sandwiches, but I fucking like a prawn. A prawn sandwich is, is, is tasty. Like, for me, it's, it's if I'm hungover, I have to go for a subway, it just has to be a double cheese, uh, it's chicken not bacon t- ranch, has to be. No, I never think about that. See, uh, I don't eat Subway because my wife doesn't like it. She just doesn't like it. Or she doesn't like it. So then, what happens is it just becomes not an option. What, yeah. When what what are we going to eat? That's so, very true, isn't it? Because my mm. wife's a vegetarian, so if you can't, a lot of times she's like, "Can you make?" And then I make it like the kids' meal, my dinner, her dinner, and uh. ours has to overlap. So if it's bolognese, it's fucking corn and. Normal, do you stick a wee beef stock you've been her so badness if, she's, if, she, if she annoys you like she's being a bitch she's ah, right. to I'll just use real mints and be like, just fire an eye fucking dead enjoy that yeah. see how we feel yeah. Yeah. and then her aura brightens up and she she, know, she wonders better. she wonders yeah. why she's feeling good I you're feel like oh amazing. must be like, corn yeah. you've taken the meat you want um, <laughs> Joe says oh, no well I mean I'll, I'll let you I'll let you read it but it will not read it out of the podcast <laughs> But yeah, uh, <laughs> why? I don't know. Every time he asks that question, right? Some format. So. Uh, what is my job? My job is I uh, I manage a community network. Mm-hmm. A community, you said. Community network it sounded yeah. a wee bit like communion. Which <laughs> no, the community fair. networks only at the weekend. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. There's a lot of dough to be made in the community. A lot of money to be made in it. Yeah, um, if you if you can do a good cocktail sausage. Well, like you drop the tail sausage. I'm sure. I can <laughs> uh, similar size, but. <laughs> Um, Mark wants to know, did you watch the X-Files and did that lead to any of your belief in conspiracies? Yes and no. So I always watched the X-Files, but uh-huh. I didn't believe, no. Uh, it's actually, uh, I've rewatched them recently. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And it's, Very scary. Yeah. Or a, a, lot of, a lot of things that they talked about um, in the 90s are now pretty much happening. Do you think people just knew that and they couldn't talk about it? And it was like... Mm. Uh, I don't know what's going. On. I mean, they're 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 planting the seeds at the moment about mm-hmm. the aliens. Have you seen that? They've seen yeah. this last couple of months. There's been. It seems there's a an eight foot dude apparently appeared. There's few and there's a few proper like disinformation videos put out on purpose. So that mm-hmm. video you're talking about, yeah, is from two years ago. Right. Okay. But with a a current audio track playing over it. Right. Okay. So the phone call of the guy describing what was in his garden yeah. is real. But the video was associated with something else. So that, that's what I'm saying. Even the course of the last three years, me and Mickey went through some fucking mad shit. Like, and you you have to follow through and see is that real or I'm not saying is it real, yeah. is real. But I mean, is it real what they're putting out? Yeah. But I mean, the amount of stuff they put out in the last, you know, just in the last three months. Mm-hmm. Um, they can even to hear it on Radio Ulster. Yeah. You know, on the news. You know, the the Pentagon has released that they have identified that there are. Because you're not, you're not allowed to say UFO anymore. Yeah. Not as you're not allowed to say it. I think maybe the connotation is UFO means you're a fucking tinfoil hat yes. thing. So it's UAP. Right, okay. So that's unidentified. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Aerial phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Wow. UFO was better, like, but... Yeah. Uh, so now the UAPs are appearing all over the place. And uh, I don't know. I, there is a... I said it before. There's a quote somewhere. I don't know. Arthur, some, Arthur C. Clarke, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, there are two possibilities. We're either alone in the universe or we're not, mm-hmm. and both are equally scary. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the way you know that what I mean. I'm like, fuck it, it is real. Because like, uh, I, I started dabbling in Black Mirror recently, and that's made me go, oh, "It's a fucking scary. It is fucking scary." And some of it, you go, "I could see that happening." You can see it actually, or yeah. already, in or it's process, already in place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and see, uh, there's some. But like then, that. does that you know? It's back to that thing of 
like if you look at the uh, Star Trek back in the 60s uh-huh. and the handheld devices where they talk to yeah you look at Quantum Leap and Ziggy and all that sort of crap yeah. was that do them shows influence the people who design the things you know yeah, what I mean yeah. as time yeah, goes yeah, on because they're the true, things yeah. that like Steve Jobs had mentioned about the whole yeah. Quantum Leap thing somewhere in some interview about you know Ziggy and you're like mm, was that where you know as time goes on that's where because mm-hmm. it was as it Captain Kirk has a flip thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, flip phones and all that sort of stuff. That's how they did it. See, is he, see you don't know. that's the side you never think about. It's the stuff that has been. You're like, oh, something like that could happen. Yeah. Like the hoverboard and Back to the Future. They're, they're developing those now. You, you know they're trying yeah, to get yeah, that. Like, And that's some yeah. guy who's not a scientist, but as a kid, nerd, really wanted to be, well, on to have a hoverboard. Yeah. Because he watched Back to the Future. You know what I mean? It's all linked in. And have you seen, I'm sure you, you have seen the fella who's, who, jumped to his death the guy was just outing people for being part of a acting paedophile network see him some guy called jaddy or something he was i saw him on twitter the other day this guy was doing videos he was an actor he'd been in things and he'd said so-and-so's involved in paedophilia and blah blah and then he ended up do you mean suicide. isaac cappy cappy that's the one yeah yes so i saw him and yeah. i thought that was a bit and then someone's like yeah because he did a video didn't he the day before he died or the day he to say he's not suicidal, suicidal and mm-hmm. then then all of a sudden he fell off a bridge into yeah. the uh, an oncoming truck. Yeah, yeah. He was in a few things. He was in was it one of the Terminator movies? Yeah, <laughs> funny enough. Uh, but he had a small part. Yeah, he. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, the Isaac Cappy thing is very strange because he, he he yeah, as you say, he he put a video out to say <laughs> I'm not suicidal, yeah. uh, and then disappeared. But I mean, he also because this is the thing me and Mickey went through as well in the podcast because that's why I was worried about what the questions were going to be yeah. because we were going oh fuck you do you believe that and I'm like no I don't believe it but I'm yeah. I'm I'm conscious that it's out there and you want to know where mm-hmm. it's coming from and it, is it being used as a fucking way of shaping yeah. people. So him, but some of the things he said like he talked about. And I won't even repeat it, but he talked about one of my favorite actors of all time, yeah. and I'm like, no, no way, yeah. no fucking way. It's not I can know the, know the one you're talking about. Yeah, and I'm like, nah, not yeah. a chance, not a chance. And then this is the worst thing about that is then you see other things that lead you down the fucking the rabbit mm-hmm. hole. You call that, and you think, oh, for fuck's sake, yeah, why would he do that? I don't doesn't make any sense. You know yeah. what I mean? There's weird things going on too. So, um, yeah, Cappy was, you know, um, I think it was a, a quite a. A scary moment when somebody mm-hmm. can say, "I'm I'm okay, I'm yeah. fine." I know I'm saying stuff about people that are very powerful, but I'm not yeah. suicidal. And then he dies, and you're like, "Ah, okay, maybe." Yeah, by suicide. By yeah. suicide, yeah. And again, you know, fuck knows if it's on somebody's yeah, life. But then that's but a good one to do too. If you're going to just whack somebody, be like, "Oh well," and then yeah. you can't autopsy and be like, "Where's the you know yeah. ligatures or whatever?" You know, they just wouldn't. It's scary. It's like the Epstein thing. I mean, yeah. Epstein, you know, the whole didn't kill himself because um, he's still alive. Yeah. No, uh, because uh, the, but, but the <laughs> even that. No, no, did you I, did you read into that? What happened? Yeah, no, I would. So be the cameras s- didn't work. Yeah, the two so guards fell asleep. Yeah, I, I would be <laughs> somebody like, who. Off. You know, like that's one that you go. That is very. Yeah, fucking. that's not the move of ten point out. It's yeah. just common fucking sense. There was one like they did, <laughs> when they did the autopsy. Like his neck couldn't have broken, but it had to be forced. Was yeah. Like uh, there's there. some. There's some mad but stuff. See, in, but in, in, in like, but you know, there are groups out there that if they you want to take care of, they'll take care of. Like you don't. When people are like the Clintons, you don't get to that level. Do you know where 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 are we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. groups out there that will take yeah. care of people if you want to. Yeah. But fuck. <laughs> we grew up yeah. fucking surrounded by them for fuck's sake. But like most of them are politicians. But that's like <laughs> like I was watching. A, I, I I love watching like old troubles interviews. And I did all that back. Whole, yeah. Like, like I'm reading a book the minute, The Killing Rage, which is a guy Eamon Collins who was a, an informant mm-hmm. from Uri. And oh, he, uh, yeah. And he got mm-hmm. to murder his books fucking really fascinating. Now, I watched a few interviews of him, and he looks like he's, he enjoys a wee bit of limelight, you know what I mean? He's right, really yeah. dramatic and all, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I was watching some of those ones back. Like, the way Jerry Adams would be like, you know, I think people, it's a shame. Like, I don't con- condone what happened here, but, you know, people in West Belfast know if you tight. <laughs> he got killed and it was like just very like so that's, matter of fact yeah you know, that's what it's happened. fucking like, cold well, and callous yeah. like it's unreal and you and you, for, you sort of forget um that they're, they're like because even us you know mm-hmm. growing up i mean i obviously am from oma so obviously and i was 17 or 18 when the bomb went off but that was the end of the trouble you know yeah i wasn't really growing up with what yeah. people in belfast had in the 70s or dairy or whatever yeah. so we don't really understand what it was actually yeah. like 
Like, see younger ones now have no fucking clue, and that's great. I yeah. think it's fantastic. They don't yeah. go up, but you'd you'd want to go right. Just fucking calm yourselves down because yeah. we know where this goes. Yeah. If you keep going down the tit for tat shit, we know where it ends up. Mm-hmm. We've came from there. <laughs> yeah. We don't want that to happen. But and it is it is still scary. Like mm. whenever you think of oh, the way it was, like you're you're sitting in a place right now uh-huh. that you know, like if you were in Ulster Hall on stage, yeah. right, you know for a fact that one sentence could cause a riot. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanted to, you yeah. could cause a riot and a heartbeat and split yeah. the entire fucking room right away. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking... Yeah, it's mad. You know what I mean? It is fucking mental. Like. But, like, it, 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 it's the whole the whole thing. Like, with with Scabatici dying there recently, all the stuff, like... Brown sticky. But, like, the, the, the level that he was... Like, he's obviously the jewel in the crown, or one of. He was the fucking nothing squad. Like, like, he was the fucking... He was the head boy that carried out all punishments. But then, like, it's, it's, it's mental to see stuff he's done. You know, the... <sighs> You know, and w- will we ever hear the full truth? Like, no, I don't, I don't think we'll ever hear because so. you because then you have to have the government yeah. saying, "Oh, and by the way, we yeah. did some shitty stuff too." And that's Cause, not yeah, because hundred percent. If if he's like the top informant, yeah, and the government are paying him, they're going to have to go. Well, you know, collateral damage is going to have to occur here isn't mm-hmm. it? to keep your cover. So then they're going. They're complicit, they're complicit in letting yeah. Well, I remember a thing that really disgusted me about, and this is fucking. This is how it happens when I, you get me on these shows. I get really serious. <laughs> I just remember standing in the shop one day, and the headline was about uh, the guy Cal, Joe Cal, the yes. football area, and it just said it as if it was just another. So the the, the man had died. And then there were some revelations after he died, usual story about, you know, he was involved in this or the other. And then it was something about MI5 recorded um, uh, operatives uh, abusing children. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, because they want to use his blackmail. Yeah. I was like, so you sat back yeah, and let somebody mm-hmm. get badly abused so that you could have yeah. collateral and you want us to Leverage. respect you. Yeah. <laughs> you want us to go, oh, thanks very much. That was mm-hmm. great. Fuck but that's, that's, but that's the world we were in, yeah. and like nobody really thinks about that. No, and that's some of the stuff that, that like I think about now as well. Is some of the stuff that, like, obviously when 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 sort of the new generation are coming through and they're voting, they're doing this and that, they forget that it was fucking terrifying. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, it was, and again, that's why I get I get I'm a little bit sort of edgy about uh, the fact that like all all the sea border stuff. It's like just mm. don't. Go back to the yeah, it, I, I, so to me it's, 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 it's on purpose. You know, you know, you know do you not know, feel so like it is like a, they, they function better when we're divided. Yeah, imagine if we were all because you know fuck what? me, we would do some fucking work. Because <laughs> what I think as well that's not the 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 thing that anyone really wants to say is as Northern Ireland exists currently, it's better for kind of the majority, both the main parties here. Of course, you know? it is, yeah. and um, and obviously they still are like, oh, we want to be full, but. Like, Northern Ireland gets so much more money from both sides, you know, it's like, and mm-hmm. you wouldn't have that if there were, you know, like, remember, do you remember whenever when Peter Robinson had gone to David Cameron to ask for more money? Mm-hmm. He was like, that, you take the most money, we can't give it, you have more, you get more money in any other region in the UK, we can't, it's how you're managing it, like fucking And they're, they're subsidising us. Yeah. And it was we like, no water charges or things like that, yeah. or bedroom tax, or anything. we have none no, of that sort of stuff. But it's, it's wild, like, and I just think the whole, I, as long, to me, as long as you can, the kids are healthy. They can feed them, and yeah. you're not under any risk. You know? And I always thought, because I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. We've so many much other fucking priorities. If you were to honestly think about it, in your day to day life, mm-hmm. even your month to month life, mm-hmm. how often does identity come into your head oh, that well, you're worried yeah. about? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like your actual things you want to get done: the education, the health, the house, and all yeah. that. Stuff. When does identity like, until it's thrown upon you by the fucking I think, media? Like? I think with you and me, what we probably don't actually ever speak about is that we have an experience in working with communities. Yeah. And I think when you're in that work and you see, the, like, when the identity's not something you're talking about, yeah. you're talking about grants for community work or yeah. cohesional work or other, like, the, it's never the identity work, it's the, mm. the housing, the jobs, the... Yeah. the important the things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, the food bank, oh, I, it's stuff like that. And it's like, I remember I've worked with, with some community groups, like, staunch on either side, mm. And it's the same problems, and it's only when you take, you know what I mean, the step it's back. It's the same issues, yeah. And, it's, and again, it's... Manufactured it's division like, yeah. across the world, let's be honest, yeah. it helps the, the powers that be if we were all... You yeah. know, the one. I always like to think, because, I mean, everybody always goes, oh, Northern Ireland, North of Ireland, all, you know, all this fucking shit. And I'm like, listen, are you from Ulster? Aye. Yeah. Right, okay, let's start from there. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. yeah I, I, I fucking, I'm a Catholic person from Ulster. You're yeah. a Protestant person from Ulster. We're both yeah. from Ulster. Let's take it from there and go on. Yeah. Because everything else is just fucking slowing us down. I, remember, I can't remember who was asking me, but they were like, well, so who do you support? And I was like, well, I support the Irish football team, but if the Republic are playing, I want them to, to do well too. And they're like, how's that work? Huh? Hey, what rugby team? Oh, I support Ireland. And huh? it's like, I just, I, you know, and I think because for me, yeah. having been from a mixed marriage, that I was always kind of never really pushed in either way, yeah. and you know, there's elements of both. You see, of course, growing up. And yeah, I, I, I was weird. I was sort of. Uh, well, I grew up in a, a almost like one of the most Republican states mm-hmm. in in the town, but at, at home there was none of that. My mom yeah. was very community oriented. That's why I ended up in that sort of field of work. Um, and like I remember the Good Friday Agreement. I was seventeen. So it wasn't allowed to vote, but yeah. obviously at seventeen you're very political and you're, yes. you know, and, like, and you know, so I, the Good Friday Agreement was out and it was a big talk and everybody was going to do their voting and everybody was going. Like, and I remember coming back, and so th- there was a vote for the Good Friday, but there was also then an, an election. And I said to uh, my mum, I was like, "Who'd you vote for?" And she was like, "The Women's Coalition." Yeah, I was like, "All right, okay." I said to my dad, "Who'd you vote for?" And he went, Women's Coalition. <laughs> he was just told yeah. to vote. <laughs> he was told by my mum. So our house was very forward thinking in that sense. But out, when you went out the door. Yeah, it was Chuck Erla and fuck yeah. this and all that sort of stuff. You're like, oh Jesus Christ, okay. Yeah. And and it was weird because it wasn't that he didn't agree with it. I just I remember being in one of the most like one of the most ardent Republicans in in the estate. I've ever been in his house, and the Gavahi Road thing was on. Yes, and I said, do you ever get like a tumbleweed moment? Yes, with the whole thing just right. Yeah. So I said, why not just let them walk down the road? Uh-huh. I was what 1987 I was 15 yeah. 14, 15 and the place just and somebody went oh he's his mother's son I know yeah oh. and I went because oh, yeah. she was very peace and cross community yeah. and all sort of stuff I was like and that was the first time I ever learned I was like oh fuck there's more to this than yeah. just common sense which is yeah. let them walk down the road and turn your back don't listen you know yeah. but yeah and I also wonder then I mean the likes of radio shows I'm not uh-huh. name who it is like, but yes. the likes of radio shows that constantly keep it yeah. Keep it bubbling, mm-hmm. you know, and they always play the victim care going, well, we don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would never play one against the other. I don't I, do that. I actually like, sad to say to my, my dad, I'm like, you stop listening to that yeah. in the morning because that that is the, the whole people listening to be annoyed and listen to people being annoyed. So you don't start your day. I was just going to say, your day you know, starts oh, off. Like and, and you're nagging straight yeah. away. You think, and and every other radio station yeah. does it the way it should be for breakfast in yeah. the morning, which is... But lighthearted, yeah. let's go, guys. Everybody get up, get up. And they're here. Yeah. It's like, what about these fuckers? I know. <laughs> Who is it today? Yeah. Fucking hell, there's those, always those, somebody. The foreigners in those hotels. <laughs> Where are the wives? And then, I, you know what the you, you know the, the, when you hear the phrase, military-aged men? Yeah. And here you're like, mm-hmm. where did the military age come yeah. out of? What the fuck? <laughs> military age is 18 yeah. to 65. <laughs> it's like, so they're just men? Yeah. <laughs> but you have to add that wee but, fucking... Like, I, I, like, that was the one that I think, uh, it's irking a lot of people. I remember saying to them, where are the women and children? And I was like, in family hostels. And they're like... <laughs> Whoa, whoa, <laughs> fuck it, there you go, shit. Yeah. You know, so you, you just, you won't win. But again, I think for me... But it is, I think that's know. where discussions have to happen. Like, I mean, because yeah. people, like I said about, you know, we got negative responses about the, the Q stuff and all that sort of thing. But you're like, no, 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 what we're saying is you need to be aware this is out there. Yeah. And this is influencing people's minds. And if you don't know what they're yeah. being influenced on, you, you don't know what the fuck you're fighting against. Yeah. So it's let me ask you one thing though, because this is one that I that I can't wrap my head around is the chickens, and the the sacrifice and all of children and the code that Hillary Clinton uses is the ch- they're going to do a chicken sacrifice and all. Uh, I don't is know about the something? chicken. So there's yeah, there's a mixture of things. So this is the 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 weird thing about it is so there's uh, thankfully it is uh, starting to come out now and it's starting to prove that it is uh, real. So Instagram recently. Mm-hmm. Um, it was revealed that they have they connect a paedophile network via Instagram. So who does? Well, there is a paedophile network linked through right. Instagram. Okay, okay. Well, no, Instagram are saying we don't know about it, uh-huh. but it fucking seems like they do. Yeah. So it's out there and it does happen. So then, what they were talking about was this cheese pizza. So there are code yes. words that are used. So cheese pizza. So pizza gate because initially when I heard pizza gate I thought See, it was in Cesc Fabregas through pizza <laughs> Sherlock like Ferguson. No. Yeah. Pizza gate and that's this is what really this is how I find it so fascinating. Pizza gate is used as the oh I suppose you believe in pizza gate do you uh-huh. right and you're like okay For, number one that was a, a a weirdo ran into a pizza place and shut it up thinking yeah. you know 
forget about that. The actual pedophiles are actually using pizza as code word for children. Right, okay. And the FBI released a report on it to say they caught this guy who's... What do you hear this? This yeah. is the thing oh. that really fucks me off about the world because it is so fucked. This guy was caught uh, by the FBI who he was procuring children on Craigslist. So it was back yes. in 2008 and nine. Yes. And the FBI intervened because the mother was taking the child to this boy. Wow. So, so that was the problem. The parent was getting paid yeah. to take the child. And I was like... Yeah. See, that was one of the ones that your man... Jaddy, Jackie, Paddy, Cappy, Cappy, clips, mm-hmm. had said that the this woman's, this child's mum had been selling her to this elite. Yeah, guy. so it does happen, and that's yeah. the, I mean, look at Ian Watkins and Lost Profits. Like, look what he was doing, he had got fans who were mothers, yeah, getting them to use it, you know. And, and what, what, because again, with him, he's one of that, that oh, just turns a, me so much. Yeah, I he, can't, he's a dirty bastard. Was he, was he like just actually ab- abusing them, or he had was a mixture images, of everything, or? and he was getting the mothers to abuse them? So oh. you imagine. Your wife, yeah, or any mother, I don't give a fuck who it is, abusing their own child mm. for a rock fan that they had or yeah. somebody that liked their music. You're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it's not even like Metallica level. It's not even some shape music, yeah, too. It's not even good. I mean, yeah, that'd have been decent. Yeah. You're like, ah, I wouldn't mind the guy. Yeah, it was fucking status quo. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Robbie Williams, yeah. I'm like, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, there's uh, so there is that weird thing, and, uh, and but I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. So that came out three days ago, and yeah. you didn't know anything about it. No, no. See, it's just fascinating. It's it? all over the place, and it was. It's not like experience theory. It was actually reported. At Instagram have linked a pedophile yeah. network through their platform, and everybody went, "All right, I." Well, as long as you can still put, as long as you still put <laughs> ticket links on, yeah. I'm fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. still on it, but it's the only yeah, one I'm yeah. on. But I use it just for the comedy. But I'm yeah. also thinking. So uh, uh, now they have just. This is what happens. There, there are sort of we on our on our other podcast, the, the other conspiracy right. one we do. The sort of the thing is, what's the difference between the conspiracy theory and the truth? Mm-hmm. 12 to 18 months um, <laughs> <laughs> so now when we were talking yeah. about last time they're like oh are you rubbish and pizza yeah. Pe- blah, 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 people using code words of pizza and children mm-hmm. uh, and on Instagram it's now been confirmed actually that is the code word so, they were using and you're like speaking of which it's nearly dinner time so it's pizza. For it some pizza. pizza for dinner for the boys <laughs> as long as it's not hot dogs yeah no true Definitely not. That's a code for a different thing. But yeah. I'll Listen, Keith, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> As always, man. Is there anything you want to plug just before you go? Where can people find you if they can't already? Uh, Other than on Instagram looking at Pizzagate. I'll be. <laughs> I, I know. Oma. Um, <laughs> no, you can. Yeah, Deck Chair and Yums, obviously. We have to give a shout out for uh, Mr. Bartlett and I. Um, where am I? in Larry tonight, but that's too late. You're in Larry's tonight, <laughs> but this will be maybe it's a week or two late, down yeah. the line. Who even knows? Uh, where are we? Oh, uh, Grand Opera House. So we're doing an Opera House with Mr. Murphy. Uh, Colin Murphy's doing the 29th of June, the 30th of June, and the 1st of July. So three nights in a row. Nice. So go get tickets for that. You'll see the two of us. Yes, there you go. Listen, thank you very much. And let's not let's not keep it as long next time. That was a lot of fun. Enjoyed that friend. thoroughly. Yeah, Absolutely. Cheers. Why are you going to troll me on here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the slack guy.